Thanks again for rejoining us on this second segment of Meet the Candidate on Independent Television and Radio this beautiful Monday evening, the 28th day of January 2019. This time around, our focus is on Orion, on the federal constituencies. And of course, the candidates for this constituency we have Osamedi. Jackson Evahavoku, who is the African Action Congress ACC candidate. We also have Iwehoi Adrian Davison, who is the African Democratic Congress ADC candidate. John Victor Osage, who is the Action Democratic Party ADP candidate. As you can see on the screen already, we have two of the candidates with us in the studio. I'd like to welcome the AAC candidate, Osamede Jackson. Many thanks for coming on the program, meet the candidate. Thank you for having me. We also have with us the ADP candidate, John Victor Osage. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay, as is a rule, uh, each of the candidates will speak for 10 minutes, telling us what their manifesto is for their constituency. We we'll certainly will ask some follow-up questions before we open the studio line so you can call. Also remember that we have a WhatsApp number, which is 0803-8726759. 0803-8726759. You can send message to that number only on WhatsApp. Our studio line, as usual, is 052-290-573. Let me start in alphabetical order, beginning with uh, Osamende Jackson. In 10 minutes, tell us what's your manifesto for the people of Oriomo, who own their federal constituency. And your time starts now. You look straight into that camera. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as you all know, my name is Osamende Jackson Ivakabuku. Um, I'm running for the Office of Federal House of Representatives, Odium who won their federal constituency under the platform of the African Action Congress. Now, um, first of all, why, are we, um, uh, why am I running for the seat? The major reason, first of all, is because of the decay and the rot that's happened in, in, in the life of the Ni Nigerian political system. And so for us, we, for me, and uh, as, as, as a person, is to actually um, go to the foundation of where this problem starts from. And that's the legislature putting in the right laws to ensure that a much needed change happens in the country, right? So what's very important, right? First of all, is that I'm going to focus on the laws that bring governance closer to the people. What do I mean by that? It means that we're going to be empowering the local governments. Because growing up as a child in Benin City, Part of what we noticed that we used to see the local governments carry out its, for its responsibilities to the people. So the effect of it is that the government seemed like it was working, right? But for the fact that because of uh, the lack of autonomy, issues around autonomy, the local governments uh, and chairmen, uh, they don't have any executive powers eh, uh, in, in reality. So what it happens is that there's a lot of governance closer to the people are really abandoned and people can actually you know, question or ask for what is due to that. We're going to focus on education uh, significantly. So for us, um, we're going to um, promote laws that would ensure that it's funding, inadequate funding of the educational sector to a point where um, the, the, private, the, the, the public schools are strengthened to a point where really, I mean, we, we take public schools back to its old glory. I mean, before now, the public schools you find out the children of the haves and the have-nots were in the same class, children of commissioners and children of, uh, of, of, of peasants. So what happens is they actually allow the children of the poor people, or I mean the people who don't have that much in society, to actually aspire to become something in life. Today, with the emergence of the private school and the lack of funding in the public school uh, space, what has happened is that the, the rich children of the haves and the private sc uh, schools and children of the have-nots uh, are in the public school. So what they have, there's a total decay of rot, as you can see in the case of the Holy Arosa. And you go to Oriam Mohonde, I mean, there's a mess. Some of these politicians who collect this fund, 
uh, can't even raise their dogs in, in, in environments as such, right? So we're also going to focus on laws that protect human rights, right? So with the issues of people trapping human rights around, and that of the girl child, by, by the way, uh, p p uh, things like, uh, you know what SARS is and what happened in the end SARS. I mean, you can actually, your right is protected and you can actually exercise uh, two rights. Diversity of the sector is another thing which I'm um, also going to be focusing on strongly. Um, there's going to be, there's, right now there's so much focus on the oil and gas industry. We need to open it up. I mean, this is the, this is the era of science, technology, engineering, and maths, right? So there needs to be some more investments in building technology, areas around actually intelligence, cognitive development, right? Robotics. And you can see the advanced side, a lot of these things are really done by machines. Go to um, um, uh, Volkswagen's uh, plant in, uh, in Spain, you realize that 80% 80, 80 robots, right? And it's technically so advanced to the point whereby solar panels, uh, solar, solar is what is being used in generating power to a point where they have so much power cells in the national body. So those are some of the things we're actually going to be focusing on, right? Using technology to diversify the economy so that small scale businesses can actually begin to thrive and grow. Right, so um, again, if you ask me, uh, this is actually a critical point I'm going to focus in on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me come to the ADP candidate. So, um, what, what's your what's your manifesto? What's what's the plan for your constituency? Okay. Thank you very much. First of all, I have to introduce myself. I am Honorable John Usaige Victor Uruguay. I am a candidate, ADP, representing Orion and Imuode. Okay, federal constituency. Okay. Uh, if you ask me of my manifesto, like I already said, um, first is the grassroots representation to the people. Because um, I believe to represent people, you have to have the interest of the people at heart. And you have to meet with them. You have to interact with the people so that you'll be able to know what they actually lack or what they need. So their needs are what I am going to represent them to sponsor a B that can favor these people. So I will try my best to create um, a representative offices in most of these two local government uh, areas, in Abudu and uh, in Eho, and also in Benin, where I have my representative uh, office. This while people can come around and uh, air their views, we can negotiate and talk together, we will be able to have uh, an agreement that can be able to reach to the federal government to reach to their needs. So that is in the area of uh, representation. And also we have a package good for education because in Orium and Umu, there uh, actually has been lacking uh, in terms of education. Uh, if you look at Umu, there Orium, which is one of the oldest local government areas, you have, we are still um, unable to have uh, uh, a higher institution in place in this uh, area. So I will try in my best to sponsor a bill that could, uh, that could favor these people, at least one of these uh, high institutions. It could be in the uh, Polytechnic or uh, College of Education. A branch of it could be cited in either Yabudu or in uh, Eho. Okay. That can be managed. Or, so this area, we're going to try that. And um, in education, we are going to give out a package of uh, Bursary to students from the secondary to university to deserving students actually that will be able to have a, a bursary or a scholarship award that they can be able to further on because I believe education is the life of every human being. So when the children are not educated and they are they are lacking, they are not able to go to school. And in fact, uh, they will not be able to represent the future of these our communities. So we are going to try our best to see that these children and the students are actively taken care of during this uh, program. So it's a good package that we have for, um, for, for, for students in, uh, in these communities okay. that will come up. Then quickly, I would like to talk about uh, empowerment programs. Empowerment programs that uh, we have, uh, like in the youth empowerment and uh, women empowerment. In the area of youth, uh, we're trying to see how we can empower the youth. Uh, because most of these are youth today moving from here to Libya to die on the desert or rather on the high sea. So this area is into consideration that will be able to empower the youth that are around 
if they have been some certain uh, small scale business that can sustain them, at least they will be able to stay. This area, people will be able to be around and uh, take care of their families and live a better life again. So we are going to do what is called um, um, uh, vocational uh, uh, training, set up a vocational training for them as they could be empowered, trained of any kind of trade they have learned in the past. So we empower them. Um, I will be able to sponsor a bid that could be able to uh, negotiate loans from the, any of the microfinance bank that can sustain them, whereby they can be able to pay back with a little interest. So with this, they will be able to set up something good in their life. Okay. And also the women, too, to them to start up their markets. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable John Victor Osage is the ADP candidate on the federal constituency. And while we were on, the ADC candidate for the Senate constituency, Dr. Awekhoi Davison, joined us. Dr. Awekhoi Davison, many thanks for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. Okay. Uh, I mean, you came at the right time, so to speak. Um, we'd like to know in the next few minutes, what is your model of development for your constituency by way of your manifesto? Absolutely. Well, um, basically, uh, first I want to introduce myself. My name is Adrian, uh, Dr. Adrian Davison. I'm based in the United States. Uh, the reason I'm into this election is basically what I've seen uh, in the Oriomo model federal constituency. What I've seen is, in my opinion, deplorable. I have been to those places. I've seen many of the roads. They are not comfortable. With, they are not even worthy of uh, any vehicle. Uh, and the schools are not there. F has F, 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 F healthcare facilities are not there and there's a lot of things in those areas that are missing and I've seen the representation in the areas, I've seen the current incumbent and I've seen what he's done, what he's done is basically zero and my own manifesto is basically to improve educational system in that area in the one their fellow constituency and to bring, um, to ensure that it's the youth, right now the youth unemployment in that area especially in the own their fellow constituency, uh, is very high. Matter of fact, higher than many other uh, local governments and fellow constituencies uh, in, uh, in a dose state, not the of the country. And, and I've seen the huge population, the population of the youth in the own their uh, fellow constituency is much higher than the other age groups. So we have such a large, large concentration for youth in such a, a viable uh, constituency. We want to make sure youth are provided for. So far, I don't see any provision uh, that have been made to make sure that the youth are basically are being fully employed. Now, coming to what I have for the area, plan if elected, I plan to make sure that I get those in charge of federal office to make sure there's adequate budget for one day, all along. That, that way, the roads can be constructed, and I will put pressure on the state government uh, to make sure they allocate enough resources to make sure those roads are constructed. <coughs> so far, what we have so far is that we have a total neglect. The area is totally neglected. No one is paying attention to uh, one day, all along the constituency. I was looking through the chat, through the map, and there's nothing whatsoever that is known or written about the area because no one, nobody pays attention. But we have representation. So if elected, what I would like to see done, what I would do, will make sure that I bring the federal government down to the area to make sure the roads are there so that market women can go to work, so there will be less accidents on the way, and also that the students are able to go to school. I visited so many areas. There are no schools. Many of the residents, there, many of the villagers are sending their children to lucrative private schools in cities. When they live in the villages, that is horrible. That shouldn't be the case. And also, healthcare. We don't have first responders in this country, let alone in Owonde, uh, Orion Federal Constituency. First responders is when, God forbid, something happens, you can call 911, you can call a number that will send an ambulance to your house. We don't have that. I see many people sending their wounded ones with wheelbarrows to healthcare centers, and sometimes often rejected by the same hospitals where they need to be treated. This is horrible. This country needs help, and I believe I have the qualification, being a PhD holder with a doctorate degree, that I can contribute my quarter to this country mm -hmm. instead of living in the United States and not and contributing to already an advanced country. So I'm bringing my knowledge, my skill, my intelligence to bear on the government here in this country so that we can improve my constituency and also at those state in general. So what do I plan to do for the people? I plan to help the market women. I've been to so many of the markets. I worked on. Uh, the markets looked and saw so many flies, so many ways they prepare food. These are unhygienic. 
we need to have a better way of making our, making our foods available. We are increasing health hazard. We're making our, we are exposing our people to diseases, sicknesses because of the way we prepare food. So my provision would be to create better markets for market women, provide them with funds, loans, soft loans that they are able to pay at their own convenience without the pressure of having to pay, you know, with the little dividends that they get from their, from their trade, from their trading. And also the students, the college dropouts, the school, high school dropouts, those are, that are able to go to school are not able to find jobs. So we want to make sure we help create industries, bring foreign investment to the neighborhood, to the area. We have oil, oil, natural oil and gas in Oriomo, but still we don't see the impact. All we're seeing is people coming from the Delta area, you know, infiltrating the Oriomo area and killing our people around the Abe community. This should not be, there is, there is total lack of security in that area. We need provisions, high security. We need to provide for our people in Oriomo, especially those in the, in the, in the, in the border between Delta and uh, Oriomo, in the in south, in southern part of uh, Oriomo, where our people are getting killed. They are being, getting invaded. Just pretty much similar to what happens in Bonu State, where Boko Haram are killing people. Our people are being killed in Oriomo, especially in the border between Delta State, the youth, they are invading our community. That's one point. At that point, there was a, uh, an oil spill in so many parts of uh, Orion, especially where there is oil. And the oil companies are not being held accountable. I want to make sure there is proper re representation that will make sure every stakeholder is, is brought to face the brunt of the, of, the, of, the, of the sufferings that they are creating in those neighborhoods. So I have a, a lot of agenda. As this conversation goes on, I'm going to let you see what my manifestos will be. And that would be an inclusive manifesto that will include the federal government. This will not be something that will be done by one person. I will liaise with my colleagues at the state assembly to make sure we not only get the federal government to assist, but the state government to assist as well. Because this is horrible. And, and lest I forget, we should be, there should be more candidates here, but of course there are none because they are afraid to tell the people that elected them that they've been falsely representing mm -hmm. what they've done or haven't done. They have not done anything. That's why they are ashamed. That's why they're not here today. And those that purport to want to represent the area don't have the credential, the wherewithal to come here and tell the people what they are people are doing for the for Monday or, or the federal constituency. We are tired of false representation. People that want to just come there and reach themselves and build mansions for themselves. We want someone that will be selfless, dedicated and committed to the people of Orion and the federal constituency. That's why I'm here. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Awehoi Adrian Davidson is the ADC candidate, Orion and the federal constituency. If you just join us, the program is Meet the Candidate on independent television and radio. Of course, it's the second session of the program today in our series of creating the platform where candidates can be profiled, where candidates can present their manifestos so that the people can see through them and see through what they have in, in, in stock for them if elected. Well, let me uh, now engage the, the candidates. Um, this is probably your first time uh, contesting an election, is that correct? Uh, no, it's, that's not correct. It's okay. not my first time. Okay. I've been uh, an administrator okay. uh, in Italy, uh, eight years as a councillor, Comune de Ravenna in Italy, okay. then four years as an administrator, immigrant administrator. In all these years you've been in Italy, yeah. uh, what contributions have you made to Orion, their constituency, that you think is sound enough is of such a high value that the people will vote for you to represent them now okay in the past um, i think uh, i have done a lot of uh, tomato walks in this orion um, each time we have a visit we'll visit most of these schools that will assist them with books and um and chairs um, and subsequent times we did that, uh, not particularly in Orion, but also some party in Benin, Ego and Ikoba Oha, oh, which we have done. So this area, I have been able to try my best as a personal sacrifice that I have been able to impart. And I came this time to see the suffering of the people. They have been actually been neglected in the past. They have not been actually been represented in the true interest of the people. 
So I think it is wise for me to come around and take it as a challenge for my people to fight for them. So you're members. saying the, the, the best you've done for your people mm. over these years is to distribute books Not in schools? Me. I distribute books, checks to the schools. Books and chairs to schools. schools. In schools. Okay. This is my area that I have been able to touch. Okay. The and people years, touch yeah. the community. Yeah. And I swear too, I've taught the life of so many in private mm. that we've been able to work together. Okay. And has been in communities, community development. What, 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 is the, what is your assurance that these that you have done mm. is enough to convince the people to vote for you? Okay. Yeah, my assurance is that. These that I've done in the past for these people, and they have been able to know that in my tenure at, in office as an immigrant administrator, I've been able to touch so many lives that have come from here that are now in Italy or in other parts of the European countries. Most of them have come, and I've been able, they have benefited from the scheme in which I have been able to uh, present to the government okay. with the, a favor in them. Okay. Today, you have people who were living under a critical surviving conditions. There is a bill that was sponsored, which actually is, is in place. People today are benefiting, and the single mothers, and people that have just come, how will they be able to get their uh, stay permit? So these are areas that have been able to assist a lot of immigrants that has come from Oriomo and Wode, and all part of Edo State in Nigeria in general. This so, bill is in Nigeria or is in Italy? It's in diaspora. Okay. Is it, is it diaspora? Diaspora in bill. Okay. Because that's where I practice. Okay. So until I come now. So this area has been able to touch so many lives that has come. Okay. Let me, let me push you there. Okay. Uh, come to Osamede. Yeah. Uh, you, you talked eloquently about the challenges in Oriomo yeah. and uh, how you intend to tackle these challenges. Um, do you have an idea of the unemployment rate in Orion and Oonda Federal constituency? What is your model to address this problem? No, uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of um, the unemployment rate, uh, I'm from the Nigeria Population Commission statistics. Um, it's uh, the, the top population of these two um, local governments combined is slightly in excess of 400,000, but quite a lot of these people, the, the, if, you, if you look at the, the age stratification of the, the community, you find out that it is largely um, the age. Um, part of it is because some of the, of, of the young uh, youth have either been in or have traveled outside of the country. Now, for those who have stayed back, um, there, there are no jobs, clearly. I mean, if you go down and the poverty rate is is alarming, and, and that's part of the reason why some of us are saying we're going back home. So I, I'll, talk, I'll just give you an inside walk. Okay. Yeah. I'll just come back down from Yekoriyama uh, just now. Um, you could see the huge expanse of land. That's a very table, a viable platform for agriculture, right? So what are we going to be doing, really? I mean, in clear terms, we're going to be a lot of youth empowerment, going to be a lot of training. I mean, they look partnerships with bodies like the ITAs. I mean, it's going to be a lot of knowledge transfer, right? Apart from knowledge transfer, you can bring, bring people together, right? To, to, to create and control hubs across this uh, um, area. So we're going to be training people in areas of agriculture, ensuring that, yes, I'm, again, the funding that it gets, I mean, the, the, the representation there probably gets in excess of <coughs> half a billion uh, naira in four years. And that's enough to bring in the required machines support the, the, the small scale farmers, bring them together as cooperatives. I mean, the BOI loan, really this proper empowerment and engagement. I mean, training with consultants, agricultural consultants, right? To actually put them in the right part, create hubs, processing hubs, ship some of these items and products. I mean, for example, I don't know if you heard about the cassava syrup. I mean, that's a veritable one for cassava, right? We can actually produce in large quantity the amount of cassava needed and then create processing plants that actually process this cassava syrup, which is needed by the, 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 the brewery industry and any other person because of healthy alternatives to sugar, right? So apart from that, we're going to be making our, creating our own roads because really, for years I know roads, and of course, we understand the best roads at the top and if they're going to be doing their so jobs. So how do you intend to achieve that, creating so, your own roads? Oh, good, fantastic. So part of what we're going to be doing is, I mean, from the earnings, we can, we can train people on how to make interlocking Road. So, of course, I said we're going to have equipment like tractors ready, which is going to support the farming uh, area, which we can actually use in expanding the roads, making it interlocking tiles, and actually 
providing roads, I mean, roads gradually, and who are going to be doing it? It's going to be our people, isn't it? We're going to export any person from uh, Edo State, uh, from Benin City, or any other province. So we're going to train these people to actually make technological towers. And guess what? If this, once we pass this knowledge to these people, we can actually sell their knowledge for, 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 so they can actually then work outside, so they become hotcakes for other areas where are, the, the youth population have been docile. Okay. For let, let, let me come to uh, the EDC candidate, Dr. Awehoy Davis Singh. Uh, thanks again for coming on the program. My pleasure. Uh, you, you've lived um, outside the shores of this country for a reasonable time. Uh, the same question that I asked uh, on John, that's what I'm putting to you. What impact have you made? What contributions have you made to your community, Orion, on whom there? And that gives you the assurance, the guarantee that now that you are seeking the election, they will listen to you. Well, basically, uh, I may have lived, I may live in the United States. I still live there. I, I've lived there for 30 years and I still live there, of course. And what have I done? I've done a lot. I've uh, really, really uh, seen uh, into their problems, looked into everything there is to know about the, about the, about the two local governments. They are not two, used to be one. And I have sort of seen firsthand that there is a lot of work that needs to be done in that area. And what I have done mainly is to research the things that have gone wrong in that area and the things that have that the potentials in the area and the things that have gone wrong that should have been done that haven't been done. And I believe, uh, though I may, have, I may live in the United States, I, I, I visit here frequently and I'm from Morocco, uh, I'm from, uh, I'm from uh, you know, all there. I was born there and I was born and raised there. I grew up in Benin City before going to the United States where I've lived the last 30 years. And uh, my contribution so far to the area has been to educate informally through my various writers. I've written about 14 bestsellers that are basically read worldwide. I've basically let the world know about this uh, insecurity in the country through my books. And I have sponsored lots of uh, uh, indirect programs, made contributions. Uh, you know, anonymous contributions, of course, because I hadn't had any interest in joining politics. It was something that was brought upon me by folks and said, look, you do all these things for others. Uh, you know, why don't you go and help your people? So that brought me closer home to want to help my people. And I've made lots of financial contributions. I am not one of those that want to put their contributions on TV so they can be praised. I can do that. And amongst the things I've done, it's one of my very famous books, Boko Haram and the Suicide Squad, which I've written and is widely read all over the country. And I've written for the, uh, so many other books that deal with the areas, especially with uh, regards to the, uh, the, uh, the stuff in the uh, Orium uh, on there. And what I plan to do mainly, if elected, is to use my personal resources you know, again, let me just point out categorically that I am not, you know, I'm not trying to get a job. Okay. I have a job. I'm coming to serve my people. Mm, okay. And in the capacity that would benefit mm. the people, I'm coming to, I'm bringing my skill and, of course, my education, uh, you know, to, to help the people in the world, you know, there. And let me quickly add, that I'm not looking for a job again. I'm not coming to work. I'm coming to serve, just as you would. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Just as you would in the, in the, you know, like the youth service. Yeah. And if this job can be done without payment, I will do it. I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because I love my people in the world and the area. Okay. And let me, I let want me, to contribute. Let, let, let me pause you because uh, you, you just said that. And uh, the question that I want to put to you guys before we open the studio line. Uh, is this. There have been complaints that the emoluments, allowances, and salaries of our national legislators is on the high side. What would you do differently if you have the opportunity to be at the House of Representatives in terms of allowances, emoluments, and salaries of our national legislator? Again, let me start with uh, Honorable Victor. Okay, thank you very much. 
Yeah, actually, um, talking about the allowances is really on the hard side compared to other parts of the world, you can find. Um, but to me, if I get there, if I like it, and uh, I will be able to at least agree with the people how it can be able to be subsided. At least this can be able to go a long way to reduce the, uh, the cost. Allowances and others can be reduced so that it could be a kind of a modern thing that will go to the level of everybody, to every other uh, uh, officials. So things have to go right in the best way they're supposed to go, that it has to be. So that is what I need to do if in that area. OK, thank you. Uh, uh, let me come to uh, Osamede, the AAC candidate. Yeah. In terms of allowances, emoluments, salaries that people say is, uh, is the highest in the world. What would you do about it? I mean, two things. It's very clear. First of all, Kipunas. Let the people actually know, in clear terms, in Naira and Kobo, how much the, each of these Federal House representative members earn. Secondly, that's not my money, right? So first of all, I'm going to be, secondly, is that I'm going to push. I'm really, and I'm serious about it, and so I'm putting on national TV. I'm going to push for it to be taken out. But if I, if I do not succeed because of the number of people that are going to be there, it is not my money. It is for the people. So part of it is that those monies are going to go through a trust alongside the various representatives of the people in each of the communities, alongside management consultants, and we used 100% for the betterment of the people. Not even a dime should come to me. And I'll put a national team. Okay, Dr. Davis, you want to speak as well? Uh, first, yeah. this country does not have the financial resources to be paying enormous salaries. Currently, we are producing 1.6 million barrels a day. That's less than the projected 2.3 million barrels a day in the federal budget. We don't have the money. Of that money that we make, 25% goes towards servicing the country's debt. So what is left? So if we are paying all these salaries, what do we have for, for infrastructural development? We don't have enough. So our members, that's why we have this do or die you know, uh, philosophy about politics. People come to office, they want to get there at any cost because of the enormous amount that they are getting paid. We need to trim down this amount. You know, it's just horrible. You know, because again, look at what we, our mainstay, our, the only income that we're getting, well, the substantial income of, of what we get comes from uh, the oil. We need to be more focused, you know, on what we as citizens of this country are willing to do for this country to make, to get this country forward, not how we can enrich ourselves. I've seen beautiful homes built in, uh, built on roads that are highly, that are highly good for vehicles to pass. You know, to, to go through. So this is horrible. How can you build a mansion in the midst of death? So moving forward, we need to trip that down. So that way we can really focus on the act of governance because we are not doing that in this country. That's why as I was listening to someone earlier, as I was coming, I was listening on radio to an earlier speaker from ADP when he said that, that uh, we are, that people are coming from every nook and cranny getting into politics just for money and they are highly qualified for these positions. And I do agree. They are highly qualified for the because they are coming to office to enrich themselves instead of trying to help develop the country. Like in my, I visited so many local government areas, so many city, uh, villages earlier, a uh, couple of days, the last couple of days, and many of them have not seen their reps. They are not seeing their current representative at any time. But I'm sure when that time comes, when it comes down to that very moment when uh, uh, votes are ready to be cast, that many of these people will come and start distributing money. You know, and buying the future of these poor folks that they are not trying to help. They have, we as leaders or potential leaders, need to be focused on how we can move this country forward by serving our people. We are not serving our people. We are buying votes. We are manipulating votes. We are rigging elections so we can put, the, put people that are not qualified in offices. Okay. That needs to stop. Okay. I've got to pursue you there now. If you just join us, you stay on to meet the candidates on independent television and radio.
And right now, I'm staying on this shop so I can take a look at some of the messages that are coming in from a WhatsApp platform. Uh, this one says, my question is to the candidate of Oryo Mohun, the further constituency. What's your plan concerning uh, our Duhaha community in regards to electricity, uh, Mr. Otagile? All right, uh, Mr. Otagile. Then the second question is, please, why is it that PDP and APC candidate did not attend the program? This is Samson Amadi Ayimi from uh, Ohenisi community under the local government. And then, how do you intend to project innovators, particularly the young initiative minds, if elected? This is from inventor uh, Dan Aigbe. Thanks for honoring the invitation for the candidate on ITV. Please, what impact can the rep do uh, over the closure of some tertiary education sector, like a cadre law and retraining of teachers? This is Dr. Paul. Thank you. Well, uh, the one that concerns me, I respond to that, which is that we send invitations to all the political parties. These are the ones that uh, uh, accepted the invitation and also made themselves available for the program. When you see the other candidates that are not here, ask them why they didn't show up for this program. I'm sure they will have better explanations to give. Well, I'm sure uh, you heard some of the questions that are read out there about mm. electricity projects so mm. I, I like to get reactions from you let me begin mm. with you okay electricity project uh, yeah. Zaleb. yes um electricity as you know is a general chain okay and it's wide so it's not a chain actually you you just have to go in but we have a plan that the electricity project in who there and Oriomo, we go to sponsor a bill that could be able to bring down the electricity to the grassroots of Orion and uh, more there. Do, do you need a bill to achieve that? Oh, sure. Because, you see, you need to have a sponsor a bill to have uh, the fund. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Not, o, o five two, able, so. o five two two nine zero yeah. is our studio line. You can dial that number right now so you yeah. can be part of it. O five two two nine zero five seven three. That's the studio number. Dial it and let's uh, get your question and contribution to the program. Yes, let me, let me get your take. On, uh, someone talked about, asked a question about innovators. What, what, are, what do you intend doing? If you like? Innovators? Yes. Um, no, the question was clear. Okay, but, okay. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure we can, yes, on the, on the electricity, yeah, you can go to, to the electricity. Okay, so, so that's fine. Now, for electricity, first of all, the fundamentals have to be addressed. Okay. And that is, has to do with a bill that helps to protect investors in the sector. Okay. ASS is very clear on it, right? So, so we have adequate sunlight. Mm to power this country. We have a business being darkness, right? So first of all, is how do we create an environment We have bills that protect investment in this sector, right? To ensure that, yes, the right investor come in form of solar, really. So like, you're I give focusing an example. on solar? Oh, yes, because if I give an example with uh, the plant in Spain. I mean, they generate enough power from, so from solar to put itself to the national body. Mm. I mean, and with the amount of sunlight that we have here in Nigeria, we have no business. Okay, being okay. so your model is? Solar, Absolutely. renewable energy. Absolutely. Okay, Dr. Davidson, I was sorry. Uh, the thing about this electricity, we've had this age long, this, this electrical, electricity problem for a long time. I, from the time I was a, a kid in this country, it's always been an issue. There's never been any time uh, in this country where electricity was adequate, where the government or the, 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 the departments uh, in charge of electricity provided electricity to satisfy the needs of the of the populace. They have never done that. And I think, like the rest of the world, it's time to abandon fossil fuel and go to renewable energy, wind, sunlight, and stuff like that. We need to invest in these areas so that we can be able to provide electricity in those areas. You know, we can use the sun. I mean, we can retain sun and be able to use it at night. And okay. it, is, it works very well. Okay, so well, let's, let's take some quick course. Real quick, I need to really yeah, yeah. add to this real quick. What they're doing, I was watching something earlier on TV where they were talking about metering instead of actually the capacity. This country has capacity for over 12,000 megawatts, I mean, in, you know, uh, kilowatts and stuff like that. But of that, they are hardly using less than 10,000. And that is because they are not exploiting the areas that, need, that they need to exploit to provide adequate electricity for this country. Okay. You know, 
All right, I I'll stop you there now. Uh, our studio line 052 573 That's the number. Hello, caller. Good evening. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, it's safe. Bishop Bissau from Sabongida Ora. Bishop Bissau from Sabongida Ora. Bishop Bissau, go ahead. It's a pleasure. Yes, what's your question? Now, you ask a very relevant and pertinent question. And that question, I want all politicians, especially those of them, in the city of the House of Red, don't talk to so and so forth, to really answer that question. The issue of the wage that they assert to themselves is so much on the high side. For instance, in the case of the Phoenix, they are monthly paying a seven or fifty thousand naira, then they are allowance for the same month is thirty five point uh, five million naira. How do you reconcile this one? If you want Nigeria to be what we want it to be, let every public office holder receive salary, not all those type of the jumbo allowances. Okay. So that at the end of it all, people are not be Okay, Bishop, so we just have to, that's how much you can take from your question or a contribution now. Uh, we actually expected a very straightforward question so that a candidate here can respond to it. We have a next caller. Good evening. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening. We can hear you loud and clear. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Julius. Uh, calling from India. Okay. Please go ahead with your no. question. Hello, please go ahead. Hello. 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 Please talk. Hello. Please turn down the audio level on your television or radio to remove the echo. So we can hear you better. Well, I'm afraid we're taking it off now. Hello, good afternoon. Good evening. Yeah, I'm Petra from the name. Yes, go ahead with your question. Please, I wanted to ask the candidate all about doing the battle at home. Hello. Can you hear me? I'm finding it difficult to hear what you're saying. I said I want to ask the candidates, what are they doing about the road of Oriyongwa? What are they doing about the people of Oriyongwa? Yeah, yeah, the road. The road to Oriyongwa, the road. The road to Oriyongwa. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's get the candidates involved. Uh, mm -hmm. Honorable John, you start off that again. Okay. Yes, road to Oriyongwa. Oriyongwa, yes. yes. That is, uh, like, the road to Oriyongwa, which is actually um, not in good uh, shape. Okay, now you answer that question, mm. but let's just take this call. Uh, do we still have that lady on? Or oh, we lost that lady, but okay. we hope that we lost the call. We hope she can get back to us. Yes, please so, go ahead. Um, I will try my best if I let her into office. Uh, roads in Orion, I think we'll be able to have a link road between Orion and Hood, mm. all the uh, communities. We have a road that will link them. I will be able to um, negotiate with the colleagues in the uh, state assembly okay. and uh, also sponsor a bill that I can be able to see that we'll be able to make link roads all around because without uh, adequate good roads in this area, these people will not be able to transport their goods. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you want to contribute to that? Only on roads, that's the question. Absolutely. So uh -huh. um, for us, it's going to be fix the roads, yeah. right? Again, we shouldn't uh, um, mix up our responsibilities. First of all, it's making laws, right? Yeah. Representing our people and attracting the right federal projects. Okay. So for us, I've had, we're going to be, I've been lobbyist. So okay. All right. Part of what I'm going to be doing yeah. is trying to lobby the government to ensure that, I mean, both at the federal and the state level, to ensure that there's development in terms of investment right. in the roads. Hold on, sorry, one yeah. minute, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I probably investment in the roads. So like I said before, right, I'm trying to go, go to try as much as possible to bring the remuneration down. But if we do not succeed at that, mm. because we may just be a lone voice in the wilderness, yeah. right? Those forms that I said I have for Oriyama people, mm. we're going to work together with those tractors and we're going to create our roads. Okay. Thank Dr. Davidson? Well, most of those roads are federal roads. And if we can get the federal government, which I'm sure we can as representatives, and if we 
if, we, if I get elected, what I will do is to make sure I will sponsor a bill, make sure that I get that bill passed to make sure my roads are constructed. Then I will liaise with my counterparts at the state level in the State House of Assembly to make sure he gets the state government involved in some of those roads that are okay, linked. Okay, I have, have a question lingering from uh, our WhatsApp platform. And it's a very germane question. It says, what's all the House of Reps uh, contestants in the studio's plan towards sports that could touch many youths' life positively? This is from Joshua. Sports development. What are your plans? Okay. Yeah, that yeah. is a good one. Sport plans are for the youth um, people. Um, we have an, uh, in our a package and uh, programs. Uh, this area, we talk of infrastructure. To bring up a good um, um, uh, sports stadiums in each of these area uh, places like Kabudu and Iho are supposed to have got uh, a place like this where we have uh, people can have uh, a sports uh, centers that they can come up. With. Okay. All right. This area will be constructed. Okay. The first one among each in Orion and who there will be fixed. Okay. Yeah. Sports. Oh, well, for me, uh, our focus is soccer. Right. Mm -hmm. So provide pitches, ensure as much as possible that, I mean, we're going to do it before those elections, okay. but we don't want to look like a Greek gift, yeah. right? So okay. what Papa's going to do is going to encourage youths to come together productively, because I don't mind oh. this devil's workshop, Absolutely. ensure that a healthy, healthy um, and competition interaction between communities okay. and, and create a healthy society. Okay. What we'll do is this, we're going to be focused on those stakeholders, the companies that operate in Orium and over there to create facilities that will get the use of the street and from crime so that they can, be, they can engage themselves in sporting activities like soccer, baseball, basketball, and stuff like that. We can do that by getting everyone involved. If you are make, doing business in Orion and Wonder, we want you to get involved in the activities of the people. Okay, as we, as we call it a wrap, yes. Mayor, as we call it a wrap, if you lose this election, would you accept the result? Oh, sure. Okay, if you lose this election, would you accept the result? I will, but we will win. No. Dr. Davidson, if you lose this election, would you accept the result? I will, uh, I will not accept the result if I don't get to see uh, the various uh, uh, ballots and, um, and how they came about. If I see that they are credible results, I will accept it, of course. But if I see they are not credible, I will not accept it. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time with us on the program. Meet the candidates on independent television and radio. We hope you had a great time while the program lasted. I want to say big thanks to all that made the show a huge success from my general manager television, Senior Adalbert, who won't say, and to all the other operational crew. Can't mention your names individually, but you're backstage ensuring that this broadcast is a huge success. Thank you so much for your big, big support on the program. And also big thanks to our general manager, Independent Radio, Pastor Dan Moses. Thank you for all the support. And to our candidates that are here and those that were here before, we want to wish you the very best in your pursuit to represent your constituency. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank sir. you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So much. Thank you. And that's our program today on Meet the Candidates on Independent Television and Radio. Look forward to the next edition of the program. We'll be featuring other constituencies, or other federal constituencies, Eastern West, Eastern Central, Igwebe Federal Constituency, Eastern Northeast, Eastern, I mean, you can just name all the constituencies. We are reaching out, and uh, be sure to join us when that happens. That's our program for today. Have a great evening. Bye for now.